working traffic, um, monitoring traffic coming westbound, and um, I saw a car that gave a abnormal driving behavior when it approached me. Uh, so I pulled out the media, and as I was pulling out, the vehicle was extremely reckless. He had an 18-wheeler behind him that was traveling westbound as well that almost collided with the rear of the vehicle. So I immediately made a traffic stop on him because the hazard he was calling to the traffic that was slowing with him. Uh, upon contact with the driver, uh, I observed the nervous behavior with him as well. Uh, first, I thought it would, could have been drugs, but after I noticed it was neither of those, I, I wanted to continue digging because his behavior was just abnormal. Uh, the more I talked to him, um, all the questions that I was asking him, he was real, he was not confident in what he, the way he was answering my questions. So that made me want to dig a little bit further with the passenger in the vehicle. So I started asking him questions about the passenger in the car and he really couldn't give me many details. Um, I asked him about her name and gave him her first name and then I came back and asked him about her last name and he couldn't give me that. When Sintel called me, and kind of gave me the rundown of what was going on and the fact that the he had identified the juvenile female as a juvenile um, and she was with a 24 year old male and that they were traveling out of Tennessee and he was out of Texas. Um, first thing I thought was human trafficking. Well, I, I stop people daily. So, and mostly everybody is worried about getting a ticket. Ticket, ticket, ticket. So once I try to lure that behavior and tell them, hey, you're only getting the warning. But when I told him that, his nervous behaviors were still skyrocketing. So that that for that let me know there was a little more to it. I asked for consent to search the vehicle because of the abnormal behavior from both. Uh, after searching the vehicle, she kept saying she was 20. I'm 20 years old, da da da, this and that. So and then I asked, um, I found a birth certificate and a social security card. And it was her. And me looking at her from approaching from the passenger side, she didn't look 20. After I showed her what I found, she said that I ran away with this gentleman here. I contacted the Mississippi Attorney General's office and a couple of their investigators came up here and met with us uh, along with CPS. Um, and just from talking to her, we were able to obtain her identity um, and her parents' name. She didn't know the phone number. but. Um, after contacting the police department in Tennessee, they uh, went to the house. I was able to talk to the dad. Um, he didn't realize that she was gone prior to about 30 minutes to my call. Um, they were out looking for her. Uh, she was not filed as a missing person there yet. Um, after talking to the father, got his contact information, handed that over to CPS. We did what we call a minimal facts uh, interview with her just to kind of figure out what was going on. Um, after talking to her and talking to him, the subsequent investigation, uh, ended up leading to charges for enticement uh, to lure a child for sexual desires, um, exploitation for things that were found on his cell phone, um, and uh, kidnapping because he was still in the process of transporting her over state line back to Texas, which is when they came into contact with Centel. Well, to me, this one kind of hit hard to me because I have little girls that's teenagers. so. I felt real good after, after the situation, but I actually felt better about this than I did getting anything else off the interstate. Well, it's extremely rewarding, first of all. Uh, it, it's, it's something I feel like a lot of times we end up having to share bad news. Uh, you're out on the scene and you and I have been out there where it's, it's bad news, it's tragic news, but this is something that's it's great news to share and it warms your heart to be able to share it and you feel like this is, this is what we do this for. It doesn't matter what your race, what your political alignment is, we can all rejoice in something like this and, and, it, and it means a lot to all of us. Parents watch your kids, Snapchats, uh, Facebook, stuff like that. Uh, social media has opened up a whole new uh, realm of predators. This is a matter of public safety. We need to keep him out of the public um, so that he can't get out there and prey upon children anymore. You would always have, always have some form of attachment. You get what I'm saying? So I, I would actually love to know how she's doing now that she's back home safe.
After a long day at work, you want a place that you can go and unwind with good food and good friends. Welcome to Outback Steakhouse, where we pride ourselves on serving up variety. Choose from our entrees or belly up to the bar for a refreshing end to your day. Or just share our famous bloomin' onion and other savory appetizers before you cut into our signature steaks. Military service members and first responders, Outback has a 10% discount to thank you for your service. Come see us at Outback Steakhouse in nine locations in Mississippi and Tennessee. Don't forget to let us know that Dark Horse Press sent you. At Guns and Gear in Gluckstadt, you've got a great shot at finding high-quality, low-priced ammunition. Sports shooting, hunting, or self-defense, you'll find the best bang for your buck at Guns and Gear. If you're looking for magazines or a gun bag or any other supplies or merchandise, we can help you with that, too. That's why they call us Guns and Gear. You can also build your own AR-15 with one of our kits. Stop by at our store in Gluckstadt today. Let us know the Dark Horse Press sent you. So tonight it's like freezing and there's a little bit of rain. Does that deter these guys that do this at any point? Uh, no, it doesn't deter them at all. Um, you know, I mean, this being a, you know, it's a 24 seven business, 365 days a year. Um, you know, we actually, you know, have had, you know, seizures and things that we've, we've done out here, you know, while it was raining. Um, and some of the guys actually say that's when they prefer to actually transport. Um, you know, so they, they know that law enforcement across the country, you know, if they can follow the rain across and whatnot, they, you know, typically will not have as many officers out working as it would be on a normal night when it wasn't raining. Anytime you bring in different elements other than, you know, just being a dry road or, you know, on a warmer night or anything like that, um, you know, I mean, things, you know, come into play that it could be more dangerous. You know, obviously you're having to watch traffic more because if somebody's not paying attention, you know, and they start sliding, you know, on a, you know, wet roadway, you know, that becomes more dangerous for you as well. Um, you know, but I mean, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, I mean, we, we know what it comes with and, you know, we try to deal with it the best way that we can. It's kind of a harder thing. I think I got to dress a little bit warmer because I still have to keep it cool for the dog in here. So I can't have the heat on or anything. So, I mean, I, I lay her up pretty good with a bunch of Under Armour cold gear stuff that I have. And I put on about five shirts and a jacket. And uh, of course the vest helps keep the wind off some and things of that nature, so. Okay, I understand, I understand. Uh, yes. no, no.
No ticket, just a warning, okay? Uh, thank you very much. Awesome. Okay. Uh, uh, everything, everything bueno? Me understand? Uh, and the line? See, si. yes. Yeah, when you go this way, no bueno. Ah, uh, okay, okay. You can stay in the line, understand, okay? Understand, understand. Everything bueno on your listen to you? Si, yes, yes, si? yes, yes. Okay. All right, one moment, okay? Claro, yes. Circus, and that they're headed to Military Circle Mall, uh, which looks like it's in Norfolk, Virginia. Hmm. Um, so I'm gonna see if he's actually telling me the yeah. truth about the Military Cir Circle Mall Circus. Hey, so is it the uh, is it the Portugal Circus? Yes, yes, Portugal Circus. The yes. Portugal Circus. Yes. When I look it up, it says that the circus was from the 7th through the 14th. Yes. Oh, it's the 17th now. There's no circus going on. No, I understand. The, These yeah. are the, see the Portugal circus? Yes. That's from the 7th all the way through to the 14th. And then there's nothing here. But the, this, it's already over. No, it's, 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 it's open. Did they change the dates? Yes, it, it's the Portugal, the circus, it's open now. It's que hay dos, two, two do Portugal circus. There's two Portugal circus? Yes. What's the F is number? Mi jefe. Carlos Portugal. Carlos Portugal. Yes. Carlos, is he from Portugal? No, Mexico. Mexico? Yes, and the Portugal is apellido. So the Portugal is just a name. It's a name. It's not, it's not actually a Portugal circus name, right? Yes. Yeah, Basically what he's saying is that they had, they had one circus, and so, he said he's coming from Midland, Texas, from one circus that's put on, it's called the Portugal Circus, which I guess to us wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense thinking that it came from Portugal. This man being from Mexico, now, so that's what I was initially thinking, so that's when I was, was asking what his company name was um, that he worked for, and his boss was actually, his last name was Portugal. So we kind of figured out like it's, it's not really anything to do with Portugal. The circus is named after his last name. Um, and he's coming from one over there to do the last week of this one over here at this mall in Yes, sir. Be careful, okay? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it's okay. Todo, todo bien? Yeah, you, unless you want to stay. Talk. You want to stay and talk? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, have a good one. Gracias. This guy we were, we were driving, um, noticed this guy when he made a lane change, he went over the solid white line pretty good, almost into the rumble strips. Swapping lanes. This line? Yeah, the, the solid white line. Now you did good swapping lanes, but you got you got to just stay in this lane. You can't just run over to the next over that solid line. Okay. Okay. Well, I was eating. We were stopping at the McDonald's. I was eating. Ah, uh, you just of, eating, just not paying attention. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Ain't no big deal, man. I just want to make sure that you're you're okay. You, okay. How, how many hours you been driving? Uh, about six hours. We come from Texas. What part of Texas? Uh, Orange. Uh, I think a memorial hospital. Uh, and the, the one around, 
What, what part of Tennessee? Is it downtown? Oh, Chattanooga. Yeah. Just pulled him over, got to talking to him. Uh, he's taking his wife to uh, the uh, hospital over in Tennessee. I think it's around Chattanooga or Nashville somewhere. I think they have a pretty good uh, cancer hospital over there. Um, and he was saying they have to be over there for her treatment in the morning, that they go every week and all this kind of stuff. And every week? Every week. Uh, what kind of cancer? Uh, well, she started with a breast cancer, uh -huh. and then he went back to the brain. Now uh, she had on uh, her knee. Her knee? Yeah, so it's been kind of bad. But Is it all gone in the, in the breast and the head? <laughs> it's gone now, but it, it just keeps moving, you know. He's usually having to stay behind at work because the bills are piling up and everything. And she, uh, this time he had to, he had to bring her because the daughter wasn't able to bring her in this go round. So um, he was just trying to get up there. That way they had enough time to be there a little bit early, and then they will turn right back around after her treatment and come right back. So look, be careful, okay? Okay, well thank you. All right, man. We'll okay, see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Right. Thank you. He's all good. He was just eating some french fries and not paying attention to the road for right now. So we'll go on to the next one. At Partridge Propane, winter is our favorite time of the year because we get to see more of you, our customers. Whether you just joined us or whether you've been with us for years, we look forward to making sure you stay warm when the cold weather comes in. We've got five offices in central Mississippi, so if you need propane, you are our priority, just like family because that's what you are to us. Come see us at our locations in Florence, Forest, Utica, Canton, and Choctaw. That's Partridge Propane, where our customers are our family. Hi, I'm Brett Connerly, president of Spartan Mosquito. Spartan Mosquito Protect kills mosquitoes.
what you took care of? Yeah. Off the next edge and get you something to eat. swap a tag or pull a tag off, you know, that way they they aren't, uh, you know, they aren't detected in different areas. So they'll, they'll swap it go on away or, or, or anything like that to try to change up things. Uh, we was having several drive-by shootings uh, in uh, the city of Crystal Springs. And um, it took us a while to, to figure out what was going on. Uh, it was like every other day we was having a shooting. And that's that, that definitely a, a different crime in our county. You know, I mean, it was a, some type of shooting or drive-by every other day and pretty much every, other, every weekend. And so... Uh, as I got on the street and started talking to people and stuff, I realized the level of the game problem that we have here in Crystal Springs. That's where probably 95% of our gang activity, at least our violence, has occurred over the past year and a half, two years. And so we'll ride by some uh, pretty uh, popular apartments that the gangs use for their safe haven. And we'll go down some streets where there's been multiple drive-bys and we'll just uh, see what we can see. This episode of Frontlines brought to you by Outback Steakhouse, the range at TGC Outdoors, Guns and Gear, Partridge Propane, Boondocks Firearms Training Academy, Spartan Mosquito, and People's Security. <laughs>